Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face <laughs> and my apparent permanent intro as of the last however many videos. Anywho, anywho, I have cards in a video for this week's color throwdown challenge. I'm almost on time for once, depending on when I get this video edited and up. Hopefully it'll be on time, if not, maybe a little bit after. Anyway, I've mentioned the color throwdown challenge in many, many videos. For those that aren't aware, it is just a group of us that have been um, posting a new color challenge every week and it has been going on for over a decade now. Can't remember how many years I've been a part of it. And it's open to everyone. Anyone can play along. Um, I will have a link to the challenge in my blog post, which is always linked directly below the video. So you can hop over there and then I'll have a direct link. And the info is on the color throwdown um, blog. We have it in the sidebar. It just explains how everything works. It's really simple. Anyone can play along. You can add your link and yeah, it's just for fun. We just do it to think outside the box and do color combos you normally wouldn't think of. All that fun stuff. And yeah, I pulled out a couple of oldie but goodie products. I had a rough idea in my head for this week's challenge and I had been flipping through my stencils for recent cards. I was going through my stencils and I pulled out this one. This is the tap dance stencil that Simon released several years ago. It's like five years old. Still available. Still available. So all links to it. But yeah, pulled that out and then pulled out some other recent products that I love and some new things, old and new mixing and matching and all the fun stuff. So just stay tuned and I will show you guys what I made with the colors. So basically what I ended up doing was creating one background and then I'm going to cut it up and make two cards out of it. So I started with a piece of just smooth white cardstock that is A2 sized and the tap down stencil. And I've got my uh, paper pouncer here and Simon's Sunbeam ink, which is the medium yellow ink of this trio. And I'm going to apply the ink over the stencil with the paper pouncer. So I've got all these fun little little dots going on here. And I think that's why I like the stencil so much is it isn't uniform. You know, you got larger and smaller and it's just a, it's just a good stencil. Like that's half the fun sometimes when I'm flipping through my stash and it's like, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about this. So I did that first and then I wanted to add more color. I didn't want it to be just stark white. So I went with the lighter shade of yellow and this is lemonade. And for this, I'm using a blending brush because if I'm covering larger areas of a background, brushes get her done. So I started with blending that and I kept kind of tapping the brush off as well, like just on my work surface to not have as much ink on my brush. And this will smooth out. I've mentioned this in many videos, but Simon's positively saturated inks, not only do they dry back a little bit, but they also smooth out a lot, which I just love <laughs> because no matter what, it's like my blending never has to be perfect really. Cause when it's fully dry, it, it technically looks perfect. One perfection always, always overrated, but it's really nice with the blending aspect because sometimes I struggle with that. So I did all that. And then I did a bunch of die cutting of just scraps of the same cardstock using the um, etched daisy, is it etched daisy stem, etched layered daisy stem. And I put the stems onto just one of my uh, stick and stamp mats to hold everything in place. And then I quickly added green ink to them. This is Simon's Perfection, one of my favorite greens. And I used a pouncer for that as well. And then I also die cut just a couple scraps with another oldie but goodie. This is the Grassy Edges wafer die. And um, added ink to those, set those aside. For the actual daisies, I took just a very light gray copa marker. 
in a recent video I showed using um, some distress inks and a, and a little watercolor brush to add that tiny bit of shading, especially when you plan on leaving things white, adding a bit of shading makes a difference. This is one of the easiest ways because I literally just flick the very light gray marker from the base of the petal outwards. That's it. Nothing fancy. Don't got to worry about it. It And it's subtle because this is such a pale gray, but that's all you need. It just gives it that little something. So then for the centers, I decided to just go with black because there is something about like a color combo of yellow, green, and white. Black just pops. I was going to do brown because, you know, that's just force of habit. Again, it's like daisy centers. They're more like a brown color, but the black really just makes everything come together. So I quickly co colored all of the centers um, with a black Copic marker. This is the 110 Special Black. Um, yeah, there's a difference between that and like the straight black Copic marker. In the end, I don't think it really makes that big of a difference, but this is the one I have in a sketch marker and that's the one I grabbed. So colored those and then layered the two pieces together to make my daisies. I love this die set. I have used this many times in videos. I, again, I used it just recently, like last week or a few days ago, whenever it was, depending again on when videos get updated and all the different things with all the ridiculous tech issues I seem to have. But anyway, um, love this set. So layered all of my pieces together, just like so. And then I die cut scraps of black cardstock using the new uh, Fancy Hello wafer die. I used just the word. I didn't use the outline. And die cut this multiple times. And then I'm going to stack them together. And I'm just using Craft Tacky Glue in this is one of the little uh, Gina K precision bottles that I filled with Simon's Craft Tacky Glue. And yeah. Gotta stack the sentiments. It's it's one of my rules. I always say, I was like, there are no rules. And then I give you guys rules. <laughs> like with everything. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Anywho, stack them together to give it dimension. And then I decided on the inside of the cards, I wanted to use that tap down stencil again. So I just used some uh, post-it tape to mask off where the score line is. And then I'm just gonna tape the stencil into place, which is a little piece of pixie tape, just to like hold her down. And I'm gonna use that same uh, sunbeam ink and the paper pouncer. And while I'm pouncing, I'm also lightly like kind of twisting the tool just to pick up more of the ink that's already sitting on the stencil. Cause why not use it all up? So added that to the inside of both of these cards. So then you'll see more of that pattern as well, because in the end, I ended up covering up a lot of it with the die cuts and all of that. And like I said, I just, I really like this pattern. So added that to the inside. So again, it'll just give it that little extra something. And because it's yellow, like I will write right over this. I mentioned this a lot because I do get asked um, depending on what I'm putting on the inside of the, the card, sometimes when it's a little more intense or whatever, um, yeah, regardless, I always do the insides of my cards with the intention of it's going to be written over. I'm fine with that. It just gives the insides, just give it that little extra something. So I cut that background in half that I had done in the beginning and I had another scrap of white cardstock sitting here. So I stamped, um, a little sentiment from the elegantly modern greetings. I've used this in a lot of recent videos. I'm kind of obsessed with this set. I really, really like it. So I stamped that little dear friend sentiment onto those scraps that I end up trimming down and I'll add that to the front. And then on the inside of the cards, I'm going to stamp the thanks sentiment from that set. And I used VersaFine Claire Nocturne Ink for all of this and stamp that onto the insides. And then I removed that. And then I added the little sub sentiment underneath that and stamp that with the black ink as well. So that's going to finish off the inside. So lined everything up, did this with my Misty because yeah, it just depends on my mood, honestly. <laughs> but especially with a larger sentiment like that thing that has thicker areas, I like to use my Misty because sometimes you're just never certain. And if I needed to restamp it more than once, it was already lined up, but it stamped perfectly. So life was good. So now I'm going to start assembling. So I've got my little background here and I'm going to adhere this to my card front and my cards are top folding A2 white note cards. And I'm going to adhere my little background strip here. 
and then I'm going to adhere the stems for these daisies or I adhered two of them and then I had to stop filming because I lost one of them literally I mentioned this before I, and this happens a lot. I just don't include it in videos most of the time because, uh, you know, I'm completely off camera and, you know, it, things are nuts. But one of the stems decided to literally get up and walk away. Like it took me, I don't even know how long to find it. It was like, it was right here. Like how it ended up on the floor in the most weirdest place, like uh, how it got where it got. I don't even know. So hunted around for it for a while. Finally found it. <laughs> It was a little bent out of shape too. I think I stepped on it. I don't How? How? You know? Anyway. Anyway. Got those adhered. Trimmed off the little bits hanging off the edge of the card with my scissors. And then I'll adhere that little grassy piece that I had die cut and added ink to. And then I'll adhere the daisies. And all of this I'm just adhering with um, just craft tacky glue. Because there's going to be more than enough dimension just with the layers of die cuts themselves. So I only, and I only add adhesive to the centers of the back of the daisies here. So some of the petals do stick up a little bit too, which just gives it that little extra something, something. So adhere those into place and then I'll adhere the big die cut hello sentiment. And then I'll just put a couple of my big acrylic blocks on top of this just to hold everything down for a few minutes, just to give the glue, you know, that chance to dry. So once that's adhered into place, um, I do the same thing with the second card and then I took those tiny little sentiment strips that I had stamped and trimmed and I'm just going to pop those into place with just thin little foam strips. These are the waffle flower foam strips that I just love. love. So stuck those into place with um, the foam strips and then as always a, a person could technically be done here but of course I'm going to add bling and of course I had bling that matched. <laughs> when do I not it's rare it's very very rare that I don't actually have bling that matches so I went through my stash and I pulled out these uh trinity stamps uh luminous lemon baubles love so yeah got my little sentiments in place here pulled out my little my little bit of bling and um oh and flipped these cards over trimmed off the the blooms that were hanging over the edge there so that these will fit in an a2 envelope and then yeah got my bling figured out how I wanted to adhere these onto the card fronts repeated the process on the second card front and then once I was happy with the placement I'm just going to stick them into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue and that's going to finish these cards off so like I mentioned earlier I will have a link below the video to my blog post in the blog post there'll be a link to the color throwdown challenge i'll have a supply list i'll link to all the supplies i used so that info will be below in the description box if you expand the description box it's got all of that info links to my social medias all the things and yeah thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch my videos for the thumbs up in and the commenting and letting the robot overlords know you like what you're seeing <laughs> i very much appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed i would love to have you and i will see you all very soon in the next video bye